welcome to Daily Prayer, a ministry of the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. We'll be here with you every day throughout the COVID-19 emergency. I'm Pastor Bob Schaefer. It's good to see you. Today is Saturday, September 5th, the Saturday before Proper 18. Let's take a moment of silence now as we begin. We begin with a lighted candle. A candle burning in the darkness is a powerful symbol of hope. We light this candle as a sign of our strong hope that God is with us no matter what comes. The candle also reminds us that Jesus said we would be lights for the world. We are called to live generously and graciously, taking care of one another in the name of Jesus. Please join me if you'd like in lighting a candle in your own home now. Let's pray. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now we turn to the words of Holy Scripture. Today, our readings begin in the book of Psalms, number 119. Teach me, O Lord, the lifestyle prescribed by your statutes, so that I might observe it continually. Give me understanding, so that I might observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Guide me in the path of your commands, for I delight to walk in it. Give me a desire for your rules, rather than for wealth gained unjustly. Turn my eyes away from what is worthless. Revive me with your word. Confirm to your servant your promise, which you made to the one who honors you. Take away the insults that I dread. Indeed, your regulations are good. Look, I long for your precepts. Revive me with your deliverance. Now we turn to the prophet Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, suppose I bring a sword against the land and the people of the land take one man from their borders and make him their watchman. He sees the sword coming against the land, blows the trumpet and warns the people. But there is one who hears the sound of the trumpet yet does not heed the warning. Then the sword comes and sweeps him away. He will be responsible for his own death. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not heed the warning, so he is responsible for himself. If he had heeded the warning, he would have saved his life. But suppose the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people. Then the sword comes and takes one of their lives. He is swept away for his iniquity but I will hold the watchman accountable for that person's death. Finally, in the Gospel of Matthew, the 23rd chapter, we read, Jesus said, Woe to you, experts in the law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites! You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have participated with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. By saying this, you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your ancestors. You snakes, you offspring of vipers. How will you escape being condemned to hell? For this reason, I am sending you prophets and wise men and experts in the law, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town, so that on you will come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, this generation will be held responsible for all these things the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Now that we have dwelt in and been challenged by God's word, let's take some time to pray together. I'd like to invite you to pray out loud with me. Don't be embarrassed that you're praying with a video screen. I'm praying with an empty room, and yet, despite the strangeness, our technology is joining us in prayer right now, no matter when or where we are. In that spirit, then, let's pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Almighty and merciful God, you are the only source of health and healing. You alone can bring calmness and peace. Grant to all of our neighbors who are ill an awareness of your presence and a strong confidence in you. In their pain, weariness, and anxiety, surround them with your care. Protect them by your loving might, and grant to them, once again, the gifts of health and strength and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of earth and air, water and fire, height and depth, we pray for those who work in danger, who rush in to bring hope and help and comfort when others flee to safety, whose mission is to seek and save, serve and protect, and whose presence embodies the protection of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Give them caution and concern for one another, so that in safety they may do what must be done under your watchful eye. Support them in their courage and dedication, that they may continue to save lives, ease pain, and mend the torn fabric of lives and social order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, support and strengthen all those who reach out in love, concern, and prayer for the sick and distressed. In their acts of compassion, may they know that they are your instruments. In their concerns and fears, may they know your peace. In their faithful serving, may they know your steadfast love. May they not grow weary or faint-hearted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, in the stillness of our souls, we listen for your voice to know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you are near us, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. Then take us by the hand into each day that lies ahead, where you lead, we can confidently go, 
with Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Each day, I like to share with you one good thing, a bit of hopeful news, a moment of beauty, a tip to help you through the day. Since the pandemic, churches have had to think outside the box to create ways of gathering our people together safely and faithfully. At The Good Shepherd, we moved very quickly into having Sunday Zoom services and also a daily devotional program on YouTube, the one you're watching right now. Over time, we found ways of incorporating worship leaders and musical pieces into our worship again. Most recently, we've begun gathering in our front yard at the gazebo to worship together. I'm so proud of how creative and flexible my people have been in the way that we worship together. But I have to say, the folks at Faith United Church of Christ in Howard, Pennsylvania, have managed to one-up us in terms of creativity at least. On a recent Sunday over there in central PA, Pastor Jess Cast and her members pushed out from shore and spread out over the waters of the reservoir at Bald Eagle State Park for their first ever kayak church. No doubt inspired by that time when Jesus taught the crowds from a boat, Pastor Cast and her adventurous members socially distanced themselves in canoes and kayaks while she led them in an inspiring outdoor worship service. And, as she reminded them, if anyone fell in, it would be a wonderful opportunity to recall their baptism. I bet that my members are so grateful today that we're pretty landlocked over in Monroeville. Still, that's one good thing for today. Do you have a good thing that you'd like to share with the world? Send us your photos and videos by going to bit.ly slash mygoodthing and share your tips and stories with at Pastor Schaefer on Twitter. I can't wait to hear from you. And that'll do it for now. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with us today. We hope it's been a blessing. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and tell your friends about us. Stop by and visit us online at goodshepherdlife.org and please consider making a gift to support our ongoing ministry. You'll find our PayPal address in the program notes. Stay well, be of good cheer, and be kind to one another. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.